Today we'll be having a look at the Dexter DX Series Electric Over Hydraulic Brake Actuator for Disc Brakes, rated at 1600 PSI. And this is part number K71-651. Here's what our actuator looks like installed. Now the reason you're gonna need an actuator like this is if you're running hydraulic disc brakes on your trailer and you don't have the ability to run a surge coupler, this is your only way to be able to power those hydraulic disc brakes by supplying fluid pressure to them so they operate properly. Now what sets this actuator apart from other electric over hydraulic actuators out there is that this one has a self priming pump. And what that means is we don't need to worry about bleeding the actuator itself when we install it. The actuator is self bleeding. The only thing we have to worry about bleeding is our brakes themselves. This makes the install and operation and general maintenance of this a lot easier. You can't use a hydraulic surge coupler on a fifth wheel. You have to have an electric over hydraulic setup like this. Also, this setup is better than a hydraulic surge coupler that you'll find on a boat trailer or other trailers like that that use those. The reason for this is we don't have to worry about when we go to back up our trailer, the brakes being applied. Our brakes will only be applied when our foot is on the brake pedal in our towed vehicle. Surge couplers apply the brakes on the trailer when the trailer moves forward moving closer to the tow vehicle. This will apply the brakes whenever your brake controller inside your vehicle sends power to it. So it's an instantaneous response compared to others. This actuator does have a very large internal fluid reservoir. What that means is we can hold more brake fluid. This gives us the ability to use this actuator not only on single axle trailers, but tandem axle trailers and triple axle trailers without a problem. By having that much fluid, we'll have enough fluid to go through all of our lines and run to all of our calipers, up to six in total. Now, this actuator is rated to put out 1600 PSI of line pressure, which is great because a lot of hydraulic disc brake setups on for trailers, they require at least 1500 PSI of pressure to operate properly. So this one meets and exceeds those standards. Some other electric over hydraulic actuators, they require a separate breakaway battery. This kit, you can use a separate breakaway battery, or if your breakaway system on your trailer is hooked up to your house battery, such as they are in this fifth wheel, you don't need to worry about having a separate battery. You, as long as your battery produces at least nine amp hours, you can use the house batteries without a problem. Now this kit is designed to work with your breakaway system on your trailer. So if your breakaway pin was pulled on your breakaway switch, and you can hear a pump operating, this means our brakes are being applied and this will bring our trailer to a stop. This is our brake actuator here. Coming off the back of it, we have four wires. You'll notice they're about two feet long. Now you may find that you need to extend your wires in some instances, such as the case that we were gonna have today, because where we're gonna mount our actuator isn't close to where our wiring junction is on our trailer. Now, we'll use some 10 to 12 gauge heat treat buck connectors, which we have available on our website. And we'll crimp these on to the ends of our wires. Now for video purposes here today, we'll be using the exact same color wire so you can easily see what's going on. So we'll take our black wire here that we have laying around and we'll combine that with our black wire. Okay. Now we'll use a heat gun to shrink down our buck connectors. You wanna be sure to use a heat gun over a lighter because the lighter is an open flame and this is an indirect source of heat and it won't damage the connector. We have these available on our website if you need one. Here's what it looks like with all of our buck connectors shrunk down. You'll notice we have a nice proper seal all the way around, and this will provide a nice proper electrical connection where we don't have to worry about the elements causing corrosion or damage. Now we need to find a place to mount our actuator. In our particular case, we're working on a fifth wheel trailer, so we need to find a compartment that we can put it inside, and this basement compartment is a perfect location for it. So we have it sitting on the floor of our basement compartment. 
and we can secure it to the floor using a couple self-tapping screws. Okay, so we'll just use our self-tapping screws to secure it into place. Now we need to get our wires over to where our trailer's electrical wires are, or your junction box, depending on how you're wiring this up. So I'm gonna drill an access hole through this panel to get the wires to where our trailer wires are. And we'll just enlarge this until it's big enough to pass all of our wires through. We went ahead and placed our wires through the hole that we drilled, where they come into another compartment in front of that one, which is where our trailer wiring resides. We'll go ahead and route these wires over to the wiring and start making our connections now. And our black, our white, and our blue wire ends up coming out over here next to the compartment, because this is where we need to tap in on the factory wiring. Now our yellow wire, on the other hand, we have that stop about the center of the trailer to the wire loom, and then it goes towards the front of the trailer underneath this panel. Okay, now we need to attach this yellow wire to the cold side of our breakaway switch. And we'll use a 14 to 16 gauge heat shrink butt connector, which we have available on our website. Now our blue wire, this needs to attach to our trailer brake output. Now we could have attached this in our junction box at the front of the trailer, but in order to save wire and to provide a cleaner install, since there's limited space to pass wires through underneath that panel, we're gonna attach it to where our black wire is further back that it connects to the blue wire up front. So it's the black wire inside this jacketed red wire right here. We'll go ahead and cut that wire in the middle. You have those two wires twisted together. We'll place the other end of the black wire into the other end of the butt connector. And we'll crimp it down. Now we need to attach our white wire to our ground, which goes to our tow vehicle. All of our grounds on our vehicle go to the negative terminal on our battery right here, so we can attach it here and still be okay. So we'll measure off how much we need. We'll cut off the excess, strip back some insulation, take a ring terminal, stick it over the wire, and we'll crimp it in place. And we'll tighten it back down. Now our black wire, we need to attach this to where our tow vehicle has this constant 12 volt wire, which does go directly to our positive post on the battery, so we can attach it here. Now that we have all of our electrical connections made, we need to go back to our compartment where our actuator is mounted. We've gone ahead and routed our brake line over to our actuator so we can make our connection now. We've also routed the brake line through the same passageway that we drilled a hole through for our wiring. With our plug removed, we'll take our fitting on our brake line and insert it into the fitting on our actuator and we'll thread it into place. With our fitting now started, we'll tighten it down. Now we'll remove our reservoir cap from our actuator and we'll fill our unit with brake fluid from a fresh container. Hey, now that our actuator is full of brake fluid, we'll take our cap and we'll replace it. Now our actuator is self-bleeding, so once it's filled up with fluid, we don't need to worry about bleeding the actuator itself, but we still do need to bleed our brakes. Now, there's two ways you can do this. One, you can plug your seven-way into your tow vehicle and have someone manually operate the manual override on your brake controller to apply the brakes. 
but that's gonna require a second set of hands. If you're doing this by yourself, you can still do it. You'll just pull the pin on your breakaway switch. And that's how we're going to do this today. So we'll pull our pin. And now we can go back and open our bleeder screws to bleed our brakes. Okay, we're gonna be working with our caliper that is the furthest away from our actuator. And in this case, that is our passenger side rear caliper. So we'll remove the cover over our bleeder screw. And when bleeding brakes, you always wanna make sure you're using the bleeder screw that's on top above where your brake hose goes into. We'll be using a hose that goes into a bottle to contain our brake fluid so we don't make a mess. Now with our pin pulled, we'll crack open our bleeder screw. Okay, since this wheel, we had clean fluid coming through with no bubbles, we'll double check the level in our reservoir and we'll continue to bleed the remaining wheels on our trailer. Okay, now that we've repeated the process and bled all of our wheels, we need to double check our fluid level in our actuator. And we'll just top it off accordingly. And that completes our look at the Dexter DX series electric over hydraulic brake actuator for disc brakes rated at 1600 PSI. And this is part number K71-65. Thanks for watching. Click the link in our description below to shop, learn more, or visit us at eTrailer.com. And leave us a comment if you have any questions.